guys, it's Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today I'm going to be talking about my Anthurium collection. This is the second largest collection out of all of my plants. The biggest would be philodendrons. Uh, I definitely even have a lot more philodendrons now than when I made my philodendron collection video. But the Anthuriums are the plants that I am the most interested in at the moment and definitely the part of my collection that I'm the most focused on growing at the moment. So I'm excited to show you guys these plants, which I have just been appreciating so much recently. I have quite a broad range of anthuriums because I've got some of the commoner ones and I've got some really weird ones as well. I'm going to start with something a bit weird. This is the second to last anthurium that I bought and it is an anthurium forgetii. And this has been on my wish list for such a long time and I saw a private seller selling in Facebook groups. I'm going to put their Instagram on the screen now because they do sell sometimes on Instagram. It was such a good price. I can't remember how much it was now but at the time I was thinking this is such a good price and he so very kindly sent me this very large seedling. But this plant has a new leaf on the way and it's the first leaf that it's putting out in my care. So I'm so, so excited. And these look so beautiful and they are very velvety. The leaf shape of the forgetti eye when it's mature is just very distinctive uh, from the other kind of key common anthuriums and it's something that just really stands out to me in the veining and even at this really juvenile size i really am loving this little guy and one reason i love using clear plastic cups is because it's really easy to keep an eye on the root health which can give you an early warning if there's root rot or something or even pests in the roots that you might not have seen if it was in a normal nursery pot and it gives you a chance to recycle these nasty plastics that get used and i will literally use this to the point of it breaking like for many different plants to come so it's yeah it's really good and also because these have lips you can hang them if you want to put a hanging plant in a clear pot because this plant is so small uh, i've got it in my greenhouse at the moment i only have a few of my um anthurium in the greenhouse because the rest just do fine honestly in my normal room humidity which can be about from 60 to 70 depending on the time of year but I like to just provide the small ones with a bit more humidity until they've properly established. I like to have a chunky mix and then water when it's dry about down to there so not letting it fully dry out but do keep in mind in winter especially if it's cold and you're in the UK and maybe you've not got heating on very often and the air is very damp then you might need to reduce the watering a little bit less and let it dry out a little bit more because anthurium do get root rot when they sit in water. It's very important to pot them with drainage because in their natural habitat, they like to root in like the crevices of trees and climbing up other plants. So the roots wouldn't usually be uh, buried in a substrate like we have them. Next, I have two of the same plant and you probably will know what, what this is if you are not new to this channel. My Anthurium Silver Blush. That's, I was going to say it's the only Anthurium I have a duplicate of, but that is not true. <laughs> and this one was super, super tiny little plant that I got from the rescue section, I think at Langlands Garden Centre. And it was so, so small. It's lost a couple leaves along the way, but it's doing well now. This was its most recent leaf. And I got this one after. And this was really awful because this plant was meant to be a present for somebody. And I just couldn't do it. I, I bought them a different one because I fell in love with this specific plant. <laughs> this leaf may be slightly larger than the most recent leaf, which is this one. But you can see that this leaf has a much more mature shape because with the uh, crystallinums, they, when they're more mature, the leaf is kind of rounder. If you can see the difference, that's more kind of elongated. And this does have better veins as well. And these are just so easy to care for and so velvety and sparkly. I feel like it doesn't properly show up from a distance at all on camera how silver and sparkly this is, which is obviously why it's called Silver Blush. And I have one of the normal crystallinums as well, which I'll show you um, in a bit, but so cute. I feel like it's obvious that I really like anthuriums because I 
not a person to have duplicates of the same plant but I really just I, I was thinking when I got this one that maybe at some point I'd sell this one but now I'm just so attached to them. I was also just so surprised at how I repotted these not long ago at all and they both have roots growing through the bottom already. It's crazy how aeroids can just really grow so quickly especially with their roots so we might have to do an anthurium repotting video soon. <laughs> okay, next I've got a little cutie and this is a rare one. This was two seedlings that I potted together and it's anthurium grey sile. And this is something a little bit different from the other anthurium in my collection because when it's mature, it gets really elongated leaves. And also I always think again, that this is something that doesn't pick up, but the leaves, I uh, have a very subtle like sparkle to them. It's so nice, like a slight iridescence. And the last three leaves that I've got on this plant, it went this one, then this one, then this one. And you can see the leaf shape starting to mature, which is really exciting. It's got loads of little new growth points on there. And you can kind of see like this was one seedling and this was the other one. Uh, this one's doing a little bit better. So I know the option is there in the future if this gets big, but I can pot them separately if I wanted to. But I've kind of become less into having many, many different plants and more into potting cuttings up together because like a few years ago I would definitely have opted to have two of them but I just prefer now having a fuller plant I, I think there's a no it's not a fungus gnat there's an actual fly in here that's annoying go out please the door's open that way yeah no you turned around again I got this from a private seller on one of the Facebook groups because if you haven't already like especially like in our area there's some really good uh, Facebook groups for plant people and people often sell things at really good prices on there and it's just a really good way to source some plants that can seem really unaffordable. I found with this plant, like it's been living in my prop box until literally two days ago I had to move it into my greenhouse because the leaves were starting to touch the top of the box and I didn't want to get like leaf melt. But I had noticed uh, a couple of waterings ago it was like this leaf was getting edema, you know, from over watering. In fact, you can kind of see a little bit of evidence of it there. But I've noticed, so sometimes with an anthurium, it will be watered, it will get edema in one of the leaves, and then it will go away, and then the next time you water it, it'll come back in the exact same spots, like those cells are permanently damaged. But I have a leaf on my anthurium chlorinobium that's doing that at the moment and it's still going away every time. It's weird because <laughs> I know that when you get that on some outside plants, um, it can make like this orangey color and there's usually like no going back for it, but I'm very resistant to cut these leaves off, especially because that can make the situation much worse if the plant's trying to take up uh, water still and you've now put even less plant tissue like I'm more than likely to damage one of the other leaves so I think if this leaf is going to decline it's better to let it decline on its own and wait till it's fully yellow before cutting it off but yeah this is a cute little plant that I got for a good price and I saw a mature one in person recently and it made me really excited to keep growing this and see how it looks when it's bigger now this one I talked about in a plant haul and it is definitely my rarest anthurium and my favorite one that I've got and it is my anthurium umbricola. They just have the most reflective leaves because of all of this pillowy texture and I was talking about this before, I just think it's beautiful and when they're a bit bigger I think they can also have a slight more blue sheen to them. As you can see it's putting out this leaf, it's really been exciting to watch it expand. I love how when anthuriums put out new leaves it'll start out Diddy, and then you get to watch it size up. So yeah, I don't really want to be this due for transpiration, but I don't want to be manhandling this leaf right now, but it looks like it's going to be a good one. I did briefly mention before as well that I think there is a fungal issue on this leaf, but because that I found through my experience that anthurium are susceptible to edema more so than the other uh, aeroids I am just a bit 
mm, I don't really want to cut this off and then cause an issue, especially when I've got this beautiful new leaf coming. So I've sprayed it with fungicide. To be honest, I might do that again today and just avoid the new leaf. I always get funny about not wanting to spray like chemicals on brand new leaves because in my mind it feels like it will be too harsh. When I got this, I knocked this and snapped the stem and then I wrapped it in masking uh, tape for a few weeks and it healed but at like an angle. And I've had that work for a philodendron as well before. And I, it just surprises me that I thought for sure this leaf would die and it's totally fine. But yes, yeah, so beautiful. I'm really excited. I'm, I feel like I'm saying this about all of them except the super big one that I'm going to show you in a second. Um, but I am really excited to see it get bigger. And I'm going to have to have a think about what I'm going to do with my Anthurium. Like I may have some of them climbing. One of them seems very, very keen to climb. This one also seems like it would be quite keen to climb because it's already shooting out quite a lot of aerial root. Okay, this next one is really special. It's very heavy. <laughs> it's in this hand. It's, I will say the leaves are a bit dusty. It's hard to clean these velvety leaves, um, but this is my biggest anthurium. How cool is that? Oh my gosh, I love this plant. I love this plant so much. Like there's something about just a massive leaf. This is right next to my face. This is like three of my head. Like, I can't believe it. I love it so much. And I did buy this big, uh, and I will say it's had some issues. <laughs> it's had some issues. She's called Nelly, uh, and I don't name every plant because I have very many, many plants, but I like to name some of my favorites uh, sometimes. Make fun of me if you want. <laughs> but this plant is called Nelly. Um, and why that is, is so that when I walk into the room and I see her, I can just be like, whoa, Nelly. This channel is a channel of bad puns. Whenever anyone asks me about my plants for the first time, this is usually one of the default ones that I go to show them. You know, when you're trying to show people that don't care about plants, that plants are cool, and they see this leaf, they're like, okay, yes, that's so cool. I think I paid about... 60 quid but I had a discount. I spent a very long time picking out which one I wanted and I noticed that most of them when they'd come in in the shipment had got like a bit of a fungal issue. I've still got a bit on this leaf and the other big big leaf had a couple of fungal spots that weren't that bad but I was looking at all of the plants overall and I thought I still want this one because it looks like a good one. It was a good one. You are a good one, yes. But the fungal spots continued to spread even though I treated them, probably because they'd just they'd recently been imported, so I think they're just having some issues adjusting. So I made the decision in the end to cut off the leaf. Luckily didn't get edema, which I thought was definitely gonna happen after the anthurium experience. <laughs> uh, but other than that, because this was quite a fungal spot, originally and it's dried up now and it's not spreading anymore and then I've just got those two little ones on there that seem to be fine at the moment. I've noticed that when anthuriums get to this size like it seems like it uses a lot less water. Uh, this just lives out uh, on my side table, my sideboard and like I've not watered this in two weeks and I'm just feeling the compost now and I still don't think it even needs to be watered now. When it gets dry to like there, that's when I'd probably water this plant. Yeah, it's really easy other than the issues with the fungal problems. I feel like I'm gonna be tempting fate by saying this, but I've not had any pests uh, on this plant. And it's just really a showstopper to me. There's something about velvety leaves. I think it's the whole sensory like mindfulness aspect of plant care. Something that about anthuriums that just draws me to them, which must draw a lot of us to them, is there's just something alien about seeing such odd veins like striking on these dark dark green leaves. It's so beautiful and my housemate the one that I have a housemate that really likes plants and I have a housemate that doesn't really care about plants and she even thinks that this is cool. This is the one plant 
that she thinks they're so cool and she calls them uh, alien plants. I found it really easy to care for, but the one out of my collection I'm expecting to be the most difficult is Forgetti Eye as it gets bigger. I've seen a lot of people have issues with the leaves crisping and coming out weird, so we'll see if I have those issues. I hope not. Um, but I just love this plant and you know honestly I could just forget about this video right now and just stare at this plant. And the veins, you might not be able to tell from far away, I think they look kind of lime from far away, but they have the same beautiful silver as the silver blush. Just to compare, so obviously imagine it a lot bigger. But you can see that the silver is just so much more pronounced than the silver blush and I can imagine that will be blooming spectacular when it's as big as that. Next I have the two Anthurium babies and um, this one's in flower actually, it's not opened the inflorescence yet but it's really annoying me because I was hoping that it would either send out a second inflorescence or that this one would but it's not looking like, oh fungus gnats Oh, it's not looking like it's gonna happen, unfortunately. Maybe I'll be able to get some pollen off people in the plant groups or something. This is one of my favorite plants. It's just so, I prefer the leaf shape of the Chlorinervium to the Crystallinum. And I think I will definitely God, be so obsessed with this when it's really big. There's been some times where I've definitely um, neglected these because I know that they can take it. Um, it's known as the cardboard anthurium because it's got quite thick leaves. I just find it so stunning. But this is a good chance to show me what I mean about the edema. These patches here, this is like the burst cells. Uh, and this one has it, the other one doesn't. And I'll tell you exactly why this one has it. This was the newest leaf, uh, which absolutely beautiful. Not quite as big as the last leaf, but very, very beautiful. It's kind of standing in a bit of an odd position right now because it's been leaning towards the different grow lights in my room and it had uh, some kind of fungal issue on one of the other leaves. Uh, and it got to the point where I thought it wasn't spreading, but it did start to spread quite badly. And I really didn't want to have to cut the leaf off, but it just got to the point where I had to because it was around so many other anthuriums, which caused this edema. And then now, because basically the plant's taking up the same amount of water, thinking that all of its leaves are there and then it's not got it, so it's too much water and it's burst the cells. You know, it's okay. I just wanted to explain that issue in case anyone saw this on their anthurium and went to thinking, oh, pests, because it's not actually pests. I love the sinus on this plant and how the lobes overlap at the top. And a lot of people find these easy to grow in normal household conditions and not as fussy about humidity. So if you want to get some anthuriums, this is such a good one to start with. Also, I would say that this is one of the most popular, if not the most popular anthuriums. I think it's good because I've got two. I can show you how a slight difference in appearance, depending kind of what batch you get. This leaf, even though it's smaller, it somehow has a lot more mature uh, venation than, than this one does. I actually got this for someone. They didn't want it, so I kept it. <laughs> I literally, it's the uh, first time I've given someone a plant and they were like, oh, well, you just keep it and look after it. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I've got two of them now, but I do really love them. And I used to have them living next to each other. This one's in one of my favorite pots. I got this from Poppy's Potting Shed. It's nice to have one of my favorite plants in more than one area of my room. This next one was an Equigenera in pot. And I actually did like a whole Equigenera unboxing reel on my Instagram. And then I did a uh, Equigenera kind of import aftercare guide. I have had this plant for, I want to say three months, but I'm gonna write it on the screen just to make sure that I got this right. There were two plants in this import. It's not looking great but it's still alive and it's still got leaves. This came from Ecuador in the middle of winter. So I feel like obviously that's quite a big temperature change for it to adjust to. And definitely was probably a bit silly, but they were having a sale. But it did, oh no, this was a flowering stem. It tried to flower again. And I was thinking that's not a good sign, is it? Cause it's trying to, desperately reproduce <laughs> but I've um 
I've got finally a new growth point there. So hopefully we can start getting some healthy leaves. This leaf actually came out in my care, which I think you can tell. Yeah, the size difference is alarming. <laughs> uh, I was having quite a bad uh, problem with the humidity levels not staying up for long enough in my greenhouse. We have since fixed this problem. So this leaf, it was like it couldn't even unfurl properly. And you can see in the photos from Equigenera, it looked a lot more blue. And I have to say that was what first attracted me to it. I still, it's not as blue in person. Obviously this is yellowing quite a bit, these original import leaves. But when you see the state of some import plants, this hasn't done that badly. I am being very patient with it and caring for it the same as all the others. And I'm just hoping that if I give it a bit of time and I'm patient, that I'll be rewarded with a nice, actual, healthy version of this plant. Finally, I can't believe I almost forgot about this one. It's so big. Oh, I'm walking into a crystal line. This is my Anthurium jungle bush. The reason I almost forgot about this is because it lives on the floor. It's floor stem leaves. These look so amazing on the floor. It just makes me feel like I'm living in a jungle. <laughs> I feel like I probably kind of am at this point. But it's just got these really big leaves it's not as wavy as the plowmani storm and they've just got these really attractive margin i do wonder if i would be able to eventually one day cross this with the guayaquilens um because they do have that similar kind of vibe you could definitely probably cross this with jungle king it's a little bit dusty at the moment because <laughs> of where it lives so oh, you deserve a shower this is the most recent leaf it put out. The one shame about this plant is because it's so full, I never notice the new leaves until they're getting significantly bigger. Because there was a time where I thought it hadn't been growing and then I checked and I thought it has, I've just missed it somehow. And this has rooted very quickly, seven months or less I must have had this. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to repot it again. It's got quite a hefty chunky base i have some sticks in supporting it because i find that it can lean otherwise which this is a plant that i feel like i don't know what I'll... oh there's another new leaf coming actually oh yay you know i think that's the first time i've noticed the leaf when it's just a little spike how exciting this plant as well it's so easy and this is one of the types of anthurium that i will say this does not require watering as much as the normal anthuriums. I just noticed it doesn't use water up as quickly. I don't know if that's something to do with how thick the stems are, uh, but it gets quite bright light from the grow light. It's in a really good spot for light. I caught, there are a few leaves, these leaves, I keep catching them in my drawers and shutting the drawer on them. And then I don't have the heart to cut them off. So I leave them on. Because this one can be a little bit sensitive to overwatering, I feel like the chunky mix is super important. It's definitely better to underwater with this. I've just noticed that when it's thirsty, it just gets a little bit, just the leaves just droop a tiny bit and then you know. I think it's really underrated. It's huge. It wouldn't be the same in my bedroom without this. And I could imagine that it would make a really nice setup having like multiples of these, especially for like a business or something because they're so easy to care for. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my Anthurium collection. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We're uploading every Friday and we have a lot of stuff on Instagram. We post educational content on there, wallpapers, all sorts of stuff. And if you guys are interested in buying some illustrated houseplant art prints illustrated by myself and Han, then please head over to our website it's buildyourjungle.com i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you guys next time Bye.